What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Kia Soul courtesy of Fred Beans Kia in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today because there are actually several different changes for the 2022 model year for the Soul. And I'm not talking about just the badging because you guys can obviously tell that already but in addition to that you do get america's best warranty being five year sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain and this thing of course is a legend thanks to all of the hamster commercials so I am quite excited to be in this one today. In this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering for ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Soul. First one being the LX starting at $19,190. S for $21,490, GT line for $22,590, X line for $22,590, EX for $23,490, and lastly, the turbo being the one we are in today, starting at $27,790. And so, as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are actually two different engine configurations available for the Soul. First one is going to be a two liter multi port injected inline four cylinder. This engine configuration belongs to all trim levels, but that turbo turbo trim level that we have today, but this one puts out 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,500 RPM, power sent to the front wheels through an IVT or intelligent variable transmission. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.3 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 33 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel. But then there is the other engine configuration belonging to the one we have today being a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 RPM, power sent to front wheels yet again, but with this one through a seven speed dual clutch with paddle shifters, which we will test out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time for this one, approximately 6.5 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 32 on the highway, not much of a difference there taking regular unleaded fuel. All right, so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our soul, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There is a drive mode button located just to the left of the shifter. There are two drive modes being normal and sport. I did just put it in sport, so it did immediately downshift for me. So it is going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. It's also going to adjust throttle response and steering sensitivity then as well. But having said that, let's now go ahead and test out the paddle shifters. I'm going to slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. That is going to give me full control over the shifting. It's also going to tell me what gear I'm in. I'm currently in first gear in three, two, one, go. Dang. Oh my gosh. 100% took me by surprise there. These paddle shifters are dang quick, you guys. Didn't expect that. I don't know why I didn't expect that. You just never know with paddle shifters, but they were dang quick very quick reacting paddle shifters i'm very impressed but anyways now let's go ahead and get back full control to the sole here i'm just going to slide the shifter back to the right and let's find yet another straightaway and let's now do a quick little acceleration test with the sole having full control and let's see how quickly this thing is going to get us here up to speed all right this looks like a good spot in three two one wow no turbo lag that's why I said, wow, that was, that pinned the power to the ground dang good for all that power being sent to the front wheels. Kind of surprised me. I had expected a little bit of spinning there, but there wasn't any, and there wasn't any turbo lag, like I said, which you sometimes do get. So very impressive acceleration, 100% more than enough to merge you onto the highway without a doubt. But to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 11 inch ventilated front disc and then 10.3 inch solid rear disc if you were to go with one of the non-turbo trim levels if you were to go with that turbo though that will actually increase the brake size to 12 inch ventilated front discs and 11.2 inch solid rear disc overall the 60 to zero stopping distance actually doesn't differ all that much between those two setups though for the non-turbo trim levels you're going to come in at 115 feet which is actually 
very very respectable i got to be honest and the turbo trim level only decreases that by one foot so 114 feet then for the turbo typically you're going to get the 120s so that's why i'm saying 115 114 feet that is incredibly respectable as far as the braking feel goes i didn't have any issues but actually it kind of felt on the softer side if i'm being honest but those numbers will definitely speak for themselves it is an incredible braking distance from 60 but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle gas pressurized shock absorbers front stabilizer bar as well and then if you were to go with the gt line x line or turbo you're going to get in addition to that a sport tuned suspension then as well so as far as ride quality goes it is perfectly fine i've actually had no issues whatsoever sometimes with smaller vehicles smaller suv like vehicles you do have a little bit firmer of a ride but i definitely could say this it's not a firm ride in here it's actually quite nice i mean of course it doesn't have an air suspension or adaptive suspension or anything like that like the luxury brands do but it definitely will get the job done i've had no issues whatsoever when it comes to ride quality but then touching on steering feel like i said earlier it is a substantial difference when you change up the driving modes when i put it in that sport driving mode it is an immediately heavier steering feel without a doubt i just changed it again it is very well weighted in that sport driving mode. That's personally what I would prefer. And then when you take it out of sport driving mode, it instantly loosens up that steering feel. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Whatever you're into, it will definitely adjust the steering feel very substantially amongst those two driving modes. And when it comes to cabin noise, to get is maybe a slight bit of wind noise at higher speeds, but it's nothing that would bother me personally. So I've had absolutely no issues when it comes to cabin noise and then touching on visibility, that is 100% on point just based off the shape of this vehicle you guys probably already knew that but looking out my rear view mirror I could see perfectly fine the second row headrests aren't absolutely gigantic to block visibility either so that's fine as well so visibility is 100% on point without a doubt but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Kia Soul. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Kia Soul finished in gravity gray. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name that we have today, just to go over a couple of the specs here first, ground clearance is going to come in at 6.7 inches when it comes to the width of that front end, 70.9 inches. But then let's go ahead and make our way up front here. Black radiator type front grille is going to come with the LX, S, and X line trims. Hot stamping type front grille then coming with the GT line, EX, and the turbo. X-Line is going to give you an exclusive body kit just for that specific trim level. That if you were to go with the GT line or turbo trims, you will get a GT line specific exterior appearance to those two trim levels. But found within that front grille, you guys could probably see there is sole lettering or sole badging within the front grille that looks pretty good. Also red accents towards the bottom portion of the front lip since we have the turbo trim with us here today. To the sides, multi-reflector halogen headlights come with all trim levels, but the turbo because the turbo is actually going to give you led headlights as you guys are currently looking at of course either way though you still get automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night they will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming with that then if you were to go with the gt line and up you will get front fog lights and then of course with the turbo trim level it's going to change to led front fog lights so overall very nice looking front end and one more thing i did not want to forget to mention was of course the new Kia logo will be placed on the front portion of that hood for the 2022 Soul as well, which I'm personally a big fan of. But anyways, that just about rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. And so starting up top here, roof rails is actually going to come on the X-Line trim level only if you wanted them. Rear privacy glass does come standard across the board for every single trim level. When it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the LX, S, and EX. I put it that way because if you were to go with the X-Line trim level, you're actually going to get silver side mirrors. And then with the GT line, that is going to change yet again to gloss black side mirrors. And then if we go with the EX of the turbo, those side mirrors are heated. And then you will get LED integrated turn signals with the turbo trim level only. Of course, that's what you guys are looking at. But did want to also mention there is some accenting found on the front fender. It's kind of like an indentation in the front fender. It's a pretty cool little styling cue there. I didn't want to leave that out. Also red accents on the bottom portion of the side 
side skirts then as well I guess specific to the uh, turbo trim level that we have today of course then taking a look at the wheel configuration 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the LX 16 inch alloys coming with the S 17 inch alloy wheels coming with the EX and lastly 18 inch alloys coming with the GT line X line and turbo trim levels and also towards the back you guys may or may not be able to see because of the exterior color that we have but there is a floating roof line with soul badging found within that floating roof line as well which i thought was pretty cool nice little added touch to the side but having said that that does pretty much round out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back and so this is one of the most unique taillight designs it essentially surrounds the entire rear glass minus a little bit of the bottom portion i guess but it's a pretty unique design, nothing like anything else you'll see on the road. And by the way, these LED taillights that you're looking at, they are specific to the turbo trim level if you wanted LEDs. But rear window wiper back there as well. Of course, the new Kia badging once again. Just below it all, a single exhaust outlet is going to come standard across the board for all trims. But if you were to go with that turbo trim level, you will get dual chrome tips as you guys are currently looking at. And so having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so but now since we are around back of the sole, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate for every single trim level across the board. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at up to 24.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 62.1 cubic feet. To go along with that, there is some cargo lending, of course, found back there. Also a rear cargo cover. If you were to go with the EX or turbo trim levels, 12 volt power outlet coming with the GT line, EX and turbo trims. And if you were to look up under that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire underneath of there in case anybody was curious if it had that or the fix of flat, it's gonna be the spare tire in this case. So pretty much rounds out the cargo area. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the back seats here. And so when it comes to those rear seats, rear legroom is actually going to come in at 38.8 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. If you were to go with that EX or turbo trim level, I love that. There is one singular USB charging port back there. It's pretty cool. There is no rear ventilation, but with the size of the sole not being all that big of a vehicle, you probably aren't gonna need it anyways, but I did wanna mention it. But anyways, so I'll go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating coming with all trim levels, but the turbo because that turbo trend like you guys are looking at right now is going to be a syntax cloth combination or essentially a leatherette cloth combination so that's what we got here six-way manually adjustable driver seat coming with the lx gt line and x line 10-way power adjustable driver seat coming with the s ex and turbo trims heated front seats then coming with the ex and turbo trim and overall seats were plenty comfortable i definitely did not have any issues with seat comfort with these things but let's take a look at the steering wheel since we're here tilt and telescoping steering wheel leather wrapped for the gt line trim level and up flat bottom for the gt line and turbo trims and then heated specifically for the turbo trim level only but then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key you do have your kia logo on the one side and when you flip it over you have nothing because all of your buttons are actually located on the side of the key including lock unlock that button to unlock the rear tailgate there but there is actually a circular button that says hold on it above the Kia logo that is going to be your remote start which is going to come with the EX and turbo trim levels but if you were to go with the S trim level and up you're actually going to get a push button start so in this particular instance I am simply just going to put my foot on the brake here and press that engine start button then. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a fairly large digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls. And so, of course, that's going to give you a ton of different information, but perhaps the most substantial is when you adjust the driving modes between normal and sport. If you were to put it in normal driving mode, it's gonna just give you a flat digital speed readout. But if you were to put it in the sport driving mode, it also gives you your boost pressure in addition to that speed readout, which I thought was pretty darn cool. It does also tell you your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, tire pressure information, when you need your next oil change, a list 
goes on, but I really like how they did the drive modes there. But having said that, wouldn't have minded if a full digital gauge cluster was available, at least on the turbo trim level. That would be pretty cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Power sunroof is going to come with the GT line EX and turbo trims. Therefore, that is what you guys are currently looking at right now. LED interior lighting coming with the turbo trim level only. There is going to be an overhead sunglass holder that does come standard across the board. It's pretty nice. Dual zone climate control coming with the S trim level and up. Leather wrap shift boot with red contrast stitching coming with the GT line trim level and up. And to go along with that red contrast stitching, there are plenty of red accents found on the doors of the sole. Definitely look pretty good for the vibe that the sole is kind of setting off here. So I did like that. But perhaps one of my favorite parts being with the S trim level and up, you're actually going to get a wireless phone charger. So no cables needed. And I love that they use that with the S trim level because a lot of other manufacturers simply for a wireless phone charger will make you go all the way to the top trim level to get that. So Kia, well done creating value here when it comes to the tech, I will say that. But rubberized storage found just underneath of that and also along with that, dual USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well. Just behind the shifter, you will find dual cup holders and just behind that, decent amount of storage within the center armrest. Not the very most I've ever seen, but it'll get the job done. But again, the wireless phone charger is really what impressed me the most when it comes to interior quality there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech. Eight inch colored touchscreen display coming with the LX trim level only, but yet again with that S trim level, 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display and the S trim level is really where the value gets good and it continues on with safety as well. So at least go with the S trim level. I'm gonna give you my personal opinion before we even get to the end there. Bluetooth and audio streaming also coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system, S trim level and up. Climate control settings can also be found up there. Voice memo system. I always like this with Kia and Hyundai. Can essentially record your voice and then play it back at a later date so you don't forget anything maybe. Speaker lights with multiple themes coming with the turbo trim level. I thought that was pretty cool. There's romance, traveling, midnight city, and cafe. Essentially the lights kind of change colors depending upon which theme that you put it in when you're playing the music. So I thought that was pretty cool. But in addition to that, there are also sounds of nature if you didn't like actually listening to real music. And so as I always do with all my Kia and Hyundai videos, I'm simply going to shut up here and let you guys listen to all of Kia's sounds of nature. And so in addition to that, of course, you could check out your radio information up on those screens. Six speakers is going to come with all trim levels but the turbo. If you were to go with that turbo trim that we have today, you will get a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with an external amp. And you guys may have seen it. There is a subwoofer located in the cargo area then as well. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <music> That sound system was 100% perfect for the soul. This isn't that big of a vehicle, but that sound system got it done. The bass was perfect, the clarity was there, so that is definitely a very nice sound system for this particular vehicle. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys when it comes to that infotainment screen is when you do put the soul in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to start with, IIHS top safety pick when you equip this one with the LED headlights, meaning the turbo trim level. So either way, that's pretty cool. Front side, side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But again, with that S trim level and up, you are actually going to add a forward collision avoidance assist system, lane keep assist, driver attention warning, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and lane change assist as well. And yes, that means the LX does not get any of that Turbo trim level then is going to add adaptive cruise control and forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I do love the iconic styling of the Soul. I will say that it's instantly identifiable. It's so cool. 
S trim level and up is definitely where you're gonna wanna be at. I would not recommend the LX because for just a slight bit more money and probably might be able to even work the price down, I don't know, but for a slight bit more money, you get so much more with that S trim level. So that's a minimum for me at least, like the wireless phone charger, like the larger infotainment display, like navigation, like advanced safety, all that stuff. So definitely go with the S or up. Overall, great value on this one. You also get America's best warranty as well, being that 10 year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. That's wonderful. As far as room for improvement goes, that advanced safety should definitely come standard on all trim levels, as it quite often does with other manufacturers, meaning put it on the LX Kia, please. All wheel drive option would also be very nice as well, seeing as the Soul is competing with other vehicles like the Hyundai Kona, which does offer all wheel drive, but its direct competitor being the Hyundai Venue does not. Still a very similar price point, so I did want to mention that. I would love to see all wheel drive on the Soul. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.